Hi, my name is Eugenia Ortiz, known as Hexi, and I am here with Calvin Arsenia, and we are getting ready to live paint his jacket. So I'm very excited. And I always start my live painting with an intention. So what is your intention, Calvin? Protection, grace, ease, and harmony. Perfect. So that's the energy that I'm going to be channeling for you in this jacket. So I always like to start my intentions with um, clearing the space and clearing the energy. I like to use a blend of Palo Santo, frankincense, sage, copal, and myrrh. Mm. around a little bit. Let's just say your intention again. Protection, grace, ease, and harmony. Mm, harmony. Beautiful. Okay. So, touch my hand. It's an honor to do this for you. All right, let's get started. Yeah. All right, so let's start with um, a little hexagon here. Protection, grace, ease, harmony. All right, let's start with some colors. Ooh, do you like purple? Mm -hmm. Protection, grace, ease, and harmony. Beautiful. All right. Protection, ease, grace, and harmony. It's interesting I pick purple first. Purple is Violet Flame of St. Germain, which is all about protection. Are you familiar? Mm -mm. Tell me about it. Um, he was a saint. St. Germain of the Violet Flame. Um, he was known to live, don't quote me on a lot of this, <laughs> but has been known to show up in multiple dimensions. Mm. And times when I have needed protection, this color has shown up for me. So, it's purple. purple and blues and um, like lavender colors. Take a deep breath. Just like to keep that intention in mind. Protection, grace, ease, harmony. Is hiding. Let's see. So, tell me something unique about yourself mm -hmm. that you would like to share. Um, well, when I was quite young, 
I love painting so much and um, I wanted to be a painter or a scientist. Really? Mm-hmm. And you're a magical musician. Yeah, I traded in the paintbrush for the guitar. <laughs> <laughs> because to me, painting was a solitary activity and I wanted to be around people. And now you're fixing it. <laughs> you can have both. Yeah. <laughs> Fascinating. When I was a child, I thought I was going to be a veterinarian. And I'm mm. like, it's not even anywhere close to that. <laughs> Do you still get to spend time with animals? As much as possible. Mm. I'm going to ask you to hold this beautiful purple hexagon. Um, as much as possible. Mm -hmm. Anytime I get to be around a dog or a cat, I'm just like fascinated. Mm -hmm. Feel blessed. Mm -hmm. So grace, ease. Mm -hmm. Protection and harmony. I feel like I'm in a time of transition right now. Like the last few years have been, um, you know, the pandemic and then kind of fulfilling the IOUs from before the pandemic or like, you know, finishing up the contracts or things that, you know, making up for lost time. Mm -hmm. And now I feel like all of those, you know, emotional or real, social debts have been made up for and I'm moving forward into a different phase and it feels good but it feels scary too but you know the best things um, in life are things that bring about a little bit of fear you know yeah. But I think acknowledging fear and being afraid are two different things, right? Absolutely. But that's why I think about wanting ease to be a part of my life. And grace is kind of right there in tandem with that. Right. Life can be easy. It doesn't have to be a struggle. Mm -hmm. I think as artists, we often get, um, we get, or maybe it's because of movies or, or theater or something, it's more dramatic um, depictions of artists' lives and those, those get more money at the box office, you know? Like, you, there's, no, there's no profit in an easy life. Mm -hmm. Or it seems like that, you know? And so we glamorize and romanticize struggle as if that's something that we should want or invite into our lives. But I don't think that's right. Definitely not. Grace and ease. Mm -hmm. Harmony. Mm -hmm. Balance is a good one, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've been working really hard for a while now. Yeah. I want to work less hard. <laughs> well, working in, in our purpose. Yeah, yeah. That's what it's about. It's doing what we love. And you're magical and you make beautiful music and change people's lives. Yeah. It often takes a lot more effort to get to the space of making the music. You know, I say that when people ask me for a quote for a performance, it's like I have to think about how much work it's going to get, how much work 
is entailed to get to the stage. But once I'm on stage, that's just play, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but different factors created a difficult journey to get to the stage. Be that moving my instrument around or, or arranging music or um, the cost of the time for rehearsal. But, but being in the performance space, being on the stage, which is a sanctuary to me, is, is pure joy. You know, and that's not work. The work is getting there. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you're going to be a very a world renowned musician. <laughs> and I'm excited that you will be wearing this jacket. You're going to get there. Grace, ease, protection, harmony. Mm -hmm. balance in your life. It's getting there. Energetically, um, the artwork that I create for people helps them make big shifts in their life. Mm -hmm. So I feel like it's got to do the same for you. <laughs> it just has to. It would be indicative of the transition. Uh, typically. Yeah. Oh, could you fix that later? <laughs> it just means it needs to be painted more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's pretty, it's it's a common theme when people get works of art from me, whether it's a, a painting or a mural or an energy drawing and get their clothes painted. There's always a, uh, just a huge shift. And, and typically when somebody receives a work of art from me, they, they're in that transition already. Like they're, mm -hmm. or it's like, Sometimes they're a little bit stuck. Mm. And this, it's, I don't know how it's magical, but it just helps them to get unstuck. Mm -hmm. So that's also my intention for you, that it helps you in that transition, in that shift. Mm -hmm. I, I feel like I haven't quite figured out why that is. I just know that it's like a, a side effect of it. Mm -hmm. Well, and I think a part of it is you, the magic that is you, that you carry and make space for people to be present and to receive, to receive a blessing. Blessing, yeah. That's a good word for that. This means you were ready. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the other thing. It's like, typically they just, we just kind of meet, we just show up. Mm -hmm. It's kind of how this all came about. Mm -hmm. uh, was it actively um, thinking, I'm gonna paint Calvin, and <laughs> anything like that. It just was, it happened naturally. Mm -hmm. Back to ease. Exactly. And grace. Peace, ease, magic. Uh, I mean, it's it's a real thing. We just, as a society, haven't maybe it, it's not a common theme. Magic. Magic or grace or ease. Well, a lot of people like to be in difficult world. It doesn't have to be so difficult. And there's no way to to commodify. Ease. I mean, not really. Not without making someone else work hard, you know? Like, you know what I mean? Like, usually you have to pay for ease and someone else has to do the work, right? But that's not the kind of ease that we're talking about. Yeah. Grace, like being at the right place at the right time. Mm-hmm experiencing the right opportunities. Yeah. 
everything in lining. It doesn't have to be a struggle. Sure, there's work involved, but it can be fun work, easy work. It's like, ah, that person just showed up exactly at the right time, perfect moment. Like, oh my God, if that, if that hadn't happened, then it wouldn't yeah. be so easy. But it can be. That's how I experience grace and ease in, in my life. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, I'm I'm doing something. I'm I'm working, and it's a lot. However, things are lining. I mean, it's no different than when we began this. I mean, mm -hmm. was, so I'm really excited. Um, not just the life painting, but you are going to be having an amazing concert for 11-11, which is the grand finale of this exhibit. And that's, I felt a lot of grace with that. Because mm -hmm. I was like, oh my God, how perfect. <laughs> of course it's going to be Kelvin. Like it really can't be anybody else. Like that was easy. I was like, which color? I need this green pearl. And there was... Back to Grace. Knees, like. Do you remember what, when we met? What day? Do you remember the very first time first I met you? Yeah. Oh yeah, I remember <laughs> the very first time I met you. <laughs> so you were, I don't even, what I don't remember is how it came about that I was there. It was Nick's party. Right. And he invited me, and he invited other, other people. It was a party. Yeah. Oh, because you were playing your harp, and I brought my. It's this, this is interesting. I brought my my pens to draw energy, and um, I drew you. Mm -hmm. So I have that drawing. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna have to show that to you again. And I was like, wow. How do you keep your stuff organized? <laughs> All of my sketchbooks are in a in a bin, a giant, well, like a, a chest, mm -hmm. let's say that. I have hundreds and hundreds of drawings in there. Wow. Um, and you're in there. <laughs> uh, there's some other people. Do you remember the notebook? Which one? Yeah. It would be pretty easy for me to find it. Because mm -hmm. um, maybe it was, I think maybe it was 2015, 2016. Yeah. And uh, it's almost 10 years ago. What? That's a long time. Mm hmm. Hard to believe that was. So that's when I knew I was like, that's it. He's an angel. <laughs> In your drawing, I, I do specifically remember it. Um, later, somebody told me that the word Allah is in there, which is God. Mm hmm. Arabic mm -hmm. and I was like wow like makes sense because he plays the harp and angels play the harp mm -hmm. so I, was, I and I remember that you let me play your harp mm -hmm. and I had always that was the one instrument that I always wanted to play as a child which was the harp and it like it took away that that a desire that I had for so many years, that longing, that calling, mm -hmm. wanting, which is interesting. And then I have not a harp like you, but <laughs> I have my my African harps, my Ingoni. I'm up to about six now. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow, that's amazing. So yeah, I'm up to about six of those. Protection. Protection. Grace, Grace, ease, ease harmony. harmony. Extra grace, ease, and harmony. Protection, grace, ease, and harmony. That's right. I just think it's amazing I actually drew you the first time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Next color. We're gonna go move into gold. Go 
Browns and yellows. Super pearl gold. Just love looking at that. Mm -hmm. It's pretty. I'm gonna eat it. <laughs> <laughs> gold is also protection. And provision. easily conducted through gold. Mm. Better than copper? Mm, both of them are good, but yeah, gold. Mm. Gold is good. Remember they gave baby Jesus gold, frankincense, mm -hmm. myrrh, and gold? Mm -hmm. And gold was, or not gold, uh, frankincense and myrrh, it was in my incense stick. Mm -hmm. And it's so... Started with that. It's not gold, gold, but it's gold colored paint. Mm -hmm. All right, let's see. I like my hexagons to line up <laughs> because that's harmony. If not, there it just throws off the harmony. It would be chaos. Remind me about the hexagons. How did you discover them and when did they find you? Oh yeah, exactly. They found me. I did not actively go looking for hexagons. That, that, that as well was a calling. <laughs> um, they started coming through in my paintings. When I was in grad school, I was going through my MFA program in in textiles mm -hmm. and well, that makes me sure my hexagons are lining up here and I was learning an energetic process called resonance repatterning mm. I don't know if you've ever Harmony. heard it yeah <laughs> it's and that's what it's about it's making shifts so that your life is has that harmony and that's what I loved about resonance repatterning it I mean, it can identify patterns of behavior that's within a person, that's held in their energetic field, mm -hmm. um, easily finds trauma. Mm -hmm. Just things that are stuck. Maybe. So I feel like that training helps me to, to be very sensitive to, to those, to that disharmony inside of people. Mm -hmm. Not just that, but how to shift it. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I, I do that with my work, you know, by doing this or paintings and murals. I, I incorporate that into my artwork. So then I finished with grad school and I was really depressed because I couldn't find a job because I was overqualified and underqualified. At the same time. <laughs> At the same time. So I was like, I don't know what that's about, but okay. And anytime I attended to go find a regular job, I felt like I was choking, like I, I felt a noose around my neck. Mm -hmm. I felt like I was being strangled. And I was like, okay, this is definitely not the way if I feel like that. Um, a lot of people didn't understand that about me, but oh, it doesn't matter, suck it up and get a job. I'm like, no, and I just kept listening to my intuition, and then, and then I ran into this video by Alan Watts, mm -hmm. which uh, which talks about what if money was not an object? What would you do with your life? Do you be a painter, an artist, a writer, sculptor, or whatever, musician? And if that's what you want to do, then do that and become the best at that that you can be. Become a master of your craft and then you will get paid, you know, what you, what you deserve. You will get paid well. 
more than if you were to do some job, hourly job, and, you know, give your time for that. And because you're not going anywhere, it's a cycle. You go to work so that you can pay, you know, things that you want in your life. But it's like you're trading. It's like a type of slavery. Yeah. Renting your body out to someone else. Exactly. And so that made a lot more sense to me. I said, okay, well, then I'm going to become a master of my craft. Well, I was in, in my apartment and I heard a voice say, save eggshells. <laughs> and I'm like, I mean, it's just like out of nowhere. I'm just walking down the hallway, save eggshells. I'm thinking, okay, I'm crazy, but okay, sure, why not? I'm gonna listen to it. So I saved these eggshells for about six months. Wow. I remember, I had a box of them. And then one day I was creating this small sculpture, just playing around, and, and then I was like, oh, this is a cool shape. I wonder, I wonder how I should finish this. Like, what do I put on it? Just asking myself, and then I heard it again, eggshells. <laughs> and I was like, ah, okay. And then I was like, well, I don't really know how to adhere this or what am I doing here? And once again, it's just a matter of listening to that inner guidance that we all have. And, and then I put it on there and I was like, oh my God, this is like literally the coolest thing it's so beautiful this texture how i finished it and then i just and then i bought a bunch i don't know why but i wasn't even doing paintings i was doing sculptures and textiles but i just got a bunch of canvases and i went at it i just started creating i I'm, i mean i remember like in a year i made over a hundred different paintings and I now know that these paintings are actually channelings. So, just by listening to that, and then I kept listening to the Alan Watts video of you know, becoming a master of your craft so that you can you know, earn a good living. And he says that it's also better to live a short life doing what you love than a long life being miserable doing what you don't love. So that, kind of, that really hit me hard. And I was like, yeah, you know what? You're right. Like, that makes sense to me. And I did that. And it was struggle, and it's been a struggle. I think there could have been a, a, a better strategy to all that, but you know, I just kept doing it. Thinking one day I will earn a good living doing what, what I love and I'm really good at. Mm -hmm. And Tell me a bit about that strategy part. Um, probably would have not just used that, what he was saying, to do what you love, but maybe also how do you plan for that financially? Mm -hmm. Maybe having, there's nothing wrong with having that, maybe a part-time job probably would have been good doing something else, but, yeah. you know, something smaller. And that also keeps, keeps the creativity going because you can step away from the creativity mm -hmm. and be more present in, in doing something else. But it, what you're doing as an hourly job, it would be good if it's also in alignment with your purpose. Mm. Um, yeah. How do you find your purpose? Or how did you find yours? How did I find mine? Through pain, <laughs> okay. struggle, okay. Yeah. And sacrifice, so when, when less sweat and tears. When you feel the pain, what, how do you respond in, in a positive way? How do you pivot? How do you take it on your chin and keep going? How do you use it to find direction? Mm, that's a good question. I can't say that I did it all right. <laughs> that's, no, I mean. But. But how did you find, like, it, how did you get it to take you into the right place? I have a crazy trust of the universe, mm. really. I don't make sense to a lot of people, but... We're not supposed to. 
That's what I realized. It's been a process. <laughs> it's not like I know everything or how no, it for sure, together. for sure, for sure. But I think you know, because because learning is so expensive. Well, yeah. It is That's generous to to tell people the, the expensive story about how we got here. Be that emotional. Painful. Or, yeah, pain is expensive. It was painful and expensive and. Sometimes I think maybe I could have done things a lot differently, but I want to be right here with you. Mm -hmm. I had to learn all of this. Yeah. I had to learn through all the all of my pain and all of my struggle. You know, there that it's a teacher, and I'm still learning. Mm -hmm. It's it's still painful, mm -hmm. but more and more I just like. I'm not supposed to be like anybody else. I'm different. Mm -hmm. I have a different purpose. I'm not here to do the nine to five job. I'm not here to to work and and have these material things. Because I mean, my I guess what I feel is it's not about the material world. It's about your spirit, your soul, mm -hmm. your own identity here, and your purpose, and how you're here to contribute to the world. Mm -hmm. What's your voice in, in creating harmony? How do I create harmony? Protection, grace, ease, and harmony. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we all have our purpose. There's no other Calvin. <laughs> There's no other one of you. Like you're the you're the only Calvin. <laughs> Arsenia. I met a, a young Calvin last week. Did you? Probably four years old. His oh. name is Calvin. Yes. It's like wow. I know a part of what that's like <laughs> to have that name. <laughs> <laughs> It's a process, but you got to just be true to yourself, to your soul, to your purpose, mm -hmm. to your calling. And, and uh, most people don't understand that. Yeah. They don't, they don't get it. It doesn't make sense. And, and it doesn't need to. And you just keep going. It's risky to be oneself. It is, but you're going to die if you're not. You're going to die either way. <laughs> That's right. But you internally die if you're not doing your purpose. It's yeah. painful to not be you. Yeah. You die early. You carry your body around. Yeah, no. I'm still working on it. But every day I feel like I'm closer and closer. Every day? Every day. All right. Okay, maybe not every day. <laughs> <laughs> it, it sounds nice, but it's just, you know. Okay, fine, not every day. Not Some every day. Some days I think I'm just like, what did I do to myself? Yeah, I, for sure. And then, luckily, I have a lot of really, you know, close friends. Mm -hmm. Trust the process. You know. And you look around, you take an inventory, and you see all of the beautiful work and the beautiful relationships and the beautiful moments. And it's a matter of focus and, uh, and being honest, right? Like those beautiful moments are way more important and profound than the dark times. Right. And then when I have graceful moments of, wow, now that's just worth it all. Mm -hmm. Like all this, this pain and struggle to to be me and to be my calling. Yeah, that's exactly why why I did that. This moment made it made it worth it. Mm -hmm. Isn't that crazy? Mm -hmm. Not everybody understands that because most people they they just rather be slaves and 
do what society says you're supposed to do. Yeah. I know. It's sad. It is. Because there's another way. There are other ways. There are a million other ways. <laughs> yeah, right. Because, you know, your journey is not everybody's right journey either, you know? Oh, no. Definitely not. We're all here to do very unique and different things. Mm -hmm. And we all have intuition and... How did you find your intuition? When did you know that you should trust it? Because mm. it also shows up in all of your work, right? Well, yeah, all of my work is done with intention and I use my intuition. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a listening. Yeah, how did you discover that? God, that was a slow process. You know what, I think, I, had, I would say it was probably during my spiritual awakening that I had. <clears throat> Just about 10 years ago, it was in 2014 in January, so it's coming up. It's a really fascinating story that I don't really tell a lot of people, but I had an experience in Los Angeles mm -hmm. at the Cosmic Awakening Conference. And was that related to your, um, what did you call it, uh, resonance? We, we, no. I don't know. Okay. Resonance. Yeah. Like frequency, because everything is energy, frequency, and vibration. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, you know what? That sort of sparked my curiosity because I started listening to a collective consciousness called Bashar mm -hmm. and he said to do figure eight mm -hmm. on a person when they are having disharmony mm -hmm. you know or something is going so you just go and you go upward and eight not downward always up and he says and that will help to harmonize that person mm -hmm. And I was like, oh my God, that's a modality in resonance repatterning. And I'm like, why is this guy talking similarly to things that I've been learning for the last several years? Mm -hmm. And so then that sparked my interest and I obsessively watched Bashar. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, oh my God, he's coming to LA at this conference. So I decided to, you know, take a trip and go see it, mm -hmm. see him. And I got to talk to him and then I said, like, we're, the artist is a channel to source, to spirit, just like you. You know, you connect to that too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that energy that you just, when you're, you're doing that, you feel a bliss. Mm -hmm. You feel the purpose. There's like no time. There's nothing exists but this moment that we're here creating, just like it is when you're with your music. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I was like, oh, wow, okay. So... It was a three-day conference, and by the end of it, the last thing was with Dr. Dream, the rose meditation with uh, chimes and sacred instruments. And I was like, okay, sure, why not? Well, I had a whole fascinating experience in that meditation. And I, I was physically changed. Like, I, I felt something happen to me. And I was, I was never the same. Mm -hmm. And that's when I started doing my energy drawings. And I didn't understand them. I didn't understand a lot of what was happening to me at that moment. Mm -hmm. I feel like I was activated in a way. Mm -hmm. Opened up. And I, I didn't have anybody that I could talk to, so... And it was a lot of um, trial and a lot more errors. <laughs> That's okay, you know. But there was grace to recover, right? Yeah. And then, so my drawings, I finally learned that I have to set the intention. And I always, with intention, I write energetic vibrational frequency signature drawing or painting a mural of, of that person or what's their intention, which was you, grace, harmony, ease protection mm -hmm. so when I do that it's the phone number to the universe so that is exactly what I get mm -hmm. what's for you mm -hmm. and and of course that took me several years to get out of my way to even trust that you know there was something synchronistic with that person and, and I was like, I don't even want to know anything about a person. Don't tell me anything. It, just touch the paper. 
and set the intention, blow on it, put your life force energy into it. And just, it always blows my mind, the things that come through. That's about that person. And it's always perfect for them. Mm -hmm. I can say it always, 100% of the time. Mm -hmm. I have yet to help her say, oh, no, no, I don't like it. That's not me. No, there's a response was like, that is me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that makes so much sense. And I'm like, okay, great. Because every single time I'm terrified. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but again, it's that, it's that noticing of the fear, right? It's a noticing of the fear. But not, but not being afraid. Not being afraid, acknowledging the fear, mm -hmm. and going back to Alan Watts, mm -hmm. becoming a master of my craft. Mm -hmm. So that was a big part of it, is, is to trust that. Mm -hmm. So that I can get good at that and just be like, all right, Calvin, here it is. And that's you, you know? Yeah. Let's see what color I'm gonna need. We're almost there. Do you think that, um, well, I'll say this, as a musician, like I, I don't think that I'm the best musician by any stretch of the imagination. But because people, you know, go to Juilliard or you know have this training and stuff like that, like incredible, um, just virtuosic people at uh, playing music, and you know I, I struggle with reading music. I struggle um, sometimes with my voice, um, but I think that. What I do really well is crafting a moment and yeah. using using sound and intention and 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 scent and taste to help an audience come together to be unified. Exactly. Um, and, and and that vulnerability is a big part of it too. Um, but but music is only a tool to get to that moment. Exactly. And so I'm wondering, do you because I get the the feeling, but I just want I want to know if it's true, but like that that you're, you're more of an energy worker than even a painter. Mm -hmm. Would you agree with that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that, that, exactly. That, that the painting is the tool to get to the energy. Yeah. yeah, and so what I'm realizing too, and like I'm still in my process, is that it's, a, it's about the connection that we have with others as well. We create the moment, the experience, the beauty, the harmony that, that, that happens. That's what people remember. Mm -hmm. The shift that, that came from experiencing the art. Oh, and so what I learned, oh, that's interesting, what's that about? This is silver, this is the divine feminine. Mm. So, okay. So the, the, the experience, mm -hmm. the, the shifts that are made because of the artwork, because of interacting with it or with me. It doesn't have to be with me, it has to be with the art. Mm -hmm. What does it invoke in you? Mm -hmm. oh, like that. The shifts connection. Mm -hmm. And that goes back to the Alan Watts of becoming a master of your craft. Well, I have done this for so many years. I only was, you know, had that activation, spiritual awakening um, 10 years ago, but I've been doing this way decades longer. Like, I, this, is, this is stuff that's been in the, in the works, I think since I was in the womb, since conception, <laughs> you know, like I was always creative. My mother was like, you would get the pots and pans and make these sculptures. <laughs> She's like, one day you grabbed a, I don't know what it was, a crayon or a marker, and you just made one line the same height throughout the entire house. <laughs> That's not even the worst one. When I, when I painted my grandma's TV with red nail polish. Oh my gosh. That was almost the end of my life. <laughs> so I was always being creative. Yeah. I can relate to that. So. I was quite timid as a child. I still am, really. But, um, but yeah, I was always I was always making up songs. <laughs> yeah, exactly. As early but, as I can remember. But I love to work with animals. Like I was telling you. I
Yeah. Like creating, creating a shift, a change. To make it better. To make it better. It's like there's, there's pain in uh, being, and how do I help to release that? Mm. There's pain in being. Yeah. Mm. How, how can we, how can, how can that change? Like, yeah. And again, not attributing like evil to the pain, right? Right. Like, like it's resistance or it's like... Um, You're stuck in some constriction oftentimes mm -hmm. and you don't know how to get out of it. Yeah. But there's pain in being, like, I don't know. Like sometimes I think, especially in religion, that we, we attribute um, pain to some kind of like evil mastermind, right? Or like to something that has power. Right. But there's not always power in pain, right? Like it doesn't it doesn't have a meaning. It doesn't mean that you've been bad. Because like growing up, I was always under the impression that that pain or or like a catastrophe or like a natural disaster that that was attributed to some greater purpose or some greater power that was meaning to be harmful, right? And sometimes I think that pain is just it's just a product of of being, like you're saying, like. Like it's just, it's part of the journey. It's a part of the process. And, and we should be learning how to be more nimble in that and, and not, not giving it power, not saying that, oh, I should feel bad because I feel pain, right? Or that there's something wrong with me. Right. It's not that there's anything wrong with you because you're exactly perfect the way you're <laughs> supposed to, the way that you are, not supposed to be. The, yeah. You are exactly the way it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. And we're always, here, well, we're here to evolve. Mm -hmm. Not here to be better than anybody. Mm -hmm. I'm just here to continue to be better than I was before, or to expand, just improve. To be more open. Yeah, to be more of the authentic me that I'm supposed to be here. To, to be, be more be. harmonious. More harmonious. It's like a instrument. Mm -hmm. I'm just here to tune it and play it. Mm -hmm. And it's it's hard to do that if you're out of tune mm -hmm. with yourself, out of tune with the universe, out of tune with your purpose. Yeah. Nature. And mis misattributing. Exactly. Like mis misattributing. I don't know. I sometimes like you know, things things work in a pendulum. Mm -hmm. And I feel like with my um, you know, I, I used to think so much about purpose and so much about eternity and so much about um, where we're going or how we got here or so much about purpose. And sometimes just being is enough, you know, like just enjoying the moment. And even that can be an overcorrection, right? To not think about purpose and to not think about history or, or choices that others have made that affect our lives choices that we make that affect others' lives. Like, I think those are all I mean, also important and, I don't know. The, but also, like, the pendulum is going to happen, right? The overcorrection happens. It's always like that. That's yeah. what life is. A, it's, a, it's a hermetic principle. As far as the pendulum swings to the right, so shall it swing to the left. Mm -hmm. So, to me, it's like, wow, I had so many decades of my life just being constriction or, or painful. So I'm like, okay, so I realized there was a point in my life where I was like, okay, I feel the shift has happened mm -hmm. and I feel the swing. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I went here and so now I'm on the other side of it. Mm -hmm. And that's why I'm in this amazing space, <laughs> yeah. painting you, because there has been a shift mm -hmm. and I'm just here to continue to share that. Yeah, to write it out. Like it's, it's also there for everybody else, and not just me, because, you know, and I'm not better than anyone, and no one is better than I am. We're all here as energy and beings and here to experience life as a human, but we are spiritual beings having a human existence. And, and we all have our destined journeys, and relaxing into that, and trusting it, and knowing it, and just being present in the moment, I'm saying these all things to myself <laughs> that maybe I needed to hear. <laughs> you know, it's like usually when I say something, I gotta hear it too. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's a good reminder. Protection. 
grace, ease, harmony. Harmony. Being in harmony. Mm. I like your jacket the way it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I could go farther. But it might get a little wild. Unless you want to be wild. I want to. I want to be harmonious. Harmonious, but also whatever you want to be. <laughs> you know, it's like I feel like this is in harmony with your harp, mm -hmm. the color scheme. If I start throwing in any more colors, which would be orange mm -hmm. and red, mm -hmm. then it will throw you off a bit with in, being in harmony with your harp, mm -hmm. because you know the, the color changing one. Mm -hmm. What a wonderful conversation. Mm -hmm. I think we needed to hear something. Same. Something had to be shared. And that's why I love painting people, because we have these moments yeah. of connection, of these shifts, of this a new awareness. Mm -hmm. That's also what this is about. People think it's just, oh, I'm going to paint your clothes. It's going to be pretty art. No, I mean, it's. I can imagine that it's, a, it's similar to hairdressers, makeup artists, tattoo artists, uh, henna. Um, you know, there's certain kind of crafts that involve a person. Right. That is more about the opportunity to connect than it is even about the end product. Exactly. So that's how my, my clothes painting is or you know, my drawings, my murals, my paintings, mm -hmm. commission art, I mean that, we go on a ride. <laughs> when it's like something big like that, yeah. a painting or a mural, and so much magic happens. It's not even something that can be explained. Mm -hmm. It's just, we go on a journey, a very different journey. It's usually one that they've never had before. But it's awesome. And then just the shifts that come about it come about from from doing that. And they take a leap of faith because I'm always always tell them like there is no there is no sketches and um, there's only intention because that's what I have I have no what's known for me to work intention intention is what works trusting and knowing that because it's like if I don't do that then I'm assuming that I have to come up with this this idea this sketch this artwork and why? It just comes through me. I mean, am I professionally trained? Yes. I went to, you know, the university and, and learn art. But they didn't teach me the artwork that I create. They didn't show me how to do this. Um, do you ever teach? Gosh, not in a long time. I mean, I had a class here a couple of weeks ago. Uh, we did a painting class. Not too many people. It was like six, six total. That's Hexa enough. A hexagon. Yeah. <laughs> it was a hexagon. That's enough people. <laughs> <laughs> and we had a great time. I, and I, I didn't, was like, I don't know what I'm going to teach with this paint, painting class, paint and sip class that I've never done before. And so I look a little bit online, and oftentimes it's paint and sips, and everybody does the same picture, same painting. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, that's lame. I don't like that, because I don't like everything being the same, and we, we all have to be unique. So I decided we're going to journey with the hexagon, and we're going to go through the chakras. We're going to go through the chakras and the colors, and take that trip and you're all going to create your own work of art. Mm. You know, am I there to guide you? Yeah, it's called being the facilitator, but I'm not here to create it or 
or control what you're gonna make at all. Mm -hmm. So. I have an idea. Mm -hmm. What if the um, the warmer colors, because I feel like your work always includes them. Okay. Um, what if they were just on the back? Mm -hmm. I can do that too. So that, like you're saying, it wouldn't be inharmonious to see it from the front and the performance posture, but you still <laughs> have a complete work. <clears throat> okay, that works. So then the next color is orange. What does orange represent? Orange is your second chakra, your uh, creativity and sexuality. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, we gotta have that there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> make that happen. <laughs> sure, let's also make it very bright. This one is gonna be black light. Mm. Nice black light orange. Mm, let's see. All right. All right, touch my hand again. Grace, ease, protection, harmony. Mm -hmm. So it's gonna be fun. Let's see. evolution. For the performance day? Hmm? For the performance day? Yep. Would you do some makeup for me? Makeup? Mm -hmm. Oh, sure. I haven't done makeup in forever. Just, I think, something with the hexagons. Oh yeah, I, I already saw it when you said that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I got the download. Great. But do you have the makeup? I have lots and lots and lots of... Like different color makeup? Eyeshadows, yeah. Ah, oh, that sounds fun. Mm -hmm. That's gonna be a blast. I'd love to. So, for that day, We can have it as a part of the performance. Huh? We can do it as a part of the performance. The makeup? Mm-hmm. Like, uh, like um, at seven? Mm-hmm. Or even before that. I don't know. Something, something that happens. Like while people are walking in? Mm-hmm. Oh, that sounds fun. Because I was like, how the hell is that going to work? Maybe it's like you go to another performance, you know, like maybe, maybe a day that you're going to do something else somewhere else. I'll keep you updated. I don't know. You just got to let me know your schedule. I don't know it yet. <laughs> There's a bunch of stuff kind of up in the air right now. Mm, you know, this was a good call. Yeah, it's like the shifts that occur. It feels like a, like a morphine. Morphine? Mm-hmm. What? 
This is like morphine. It's like changing. Like, oh, I thought you said mor morphine like the drug. Oh, no, not morphine. <laughs> 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 the this is doing something interesting. Where did you collect your stencils from? I made everything. You made them all. I made stencils and brushes and Wow. I wasn't able to find you what know, you needed. No. Mm -hmm. I was just obsessed with I need this. And nobody had it. I still don't have it. Mm -hmm. You know, I just kind of had to do my own thing. Mm -hmm. Did you use a 3D printer? Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah, these are 3D printed. Because um, I wasn't finding what I needed. So red is the root chakra, which is feeling safe and secure. Oh yeah, we need that too. Having your basic necessities met, you know, food, shelter, home for sure. Protection. Mm -hmm. Grace, ease, and harmony. Red. Don't need a lot of red. That's fluorescent red. That's pretty bright. I have one last hexagon left for that. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a very, that's the fluorescent one, but I'm going to tone that down with real red. Because mm -hmm. I don't like full blast. And I like to throw in. Grace, ease, and harmony. Too much of 
how do you interpret that inclination? How do I interpret it? Mm -hmm. What do you mean? This yeah. Not too many. Mm -hmm. Not too many. I'm wondering if it's like, don't focus on the felt needs too much. You know? I think because it's your good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I mean. But I'll be taken care of. Mm -hmm. I think it's just a matter of a, a reminder. It just you needed a little bit of a reminder. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. This has been really beautiful. Yeah, it was destined mm -hmm. because I almost didn't go that night. Yeah. I didn't even see any of the concert. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, you mean recently? Where we were talking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No. It's going to be really cool on November 11th. Oh, I know that. It's going to be the grand finale. What's the show called? Resurgence. Resurgence. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Resurgence because many of these paintings are from, um, from a while back. Mm. For instance, that really large one to your right. Mm -hmm. That one is from Santa Monica, mm -hmm. and it was there for about um, seven years exactly. Mm -hmm. It was like almost to the date, seven years. Mm -hmm. It's completion. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like that painting over there had been damaged mm -hmm. for longer than that. And I finally fixed it mm -hmm. and got it on a, you know, on a canvas and everything. Mm -hmm. The one that's in the hallway with the alien, mm -hmm. that's my COVID painting. And this is only the second time it's been shown. Mm -hmm. so. Wild times. Okay. <laughs> So I'm feeling complete at this moment. Mm -hmm. And are you ready to see it? Yeah. And like this. So then I'll we'll do a little bit of touch-ups on the mannequin, but your energy's already on there. Mm -hmm. It's important to have you wear it because of all that dialogue mm -hmm. and all that that we shared was it was necessary. See how it's like It feels like wings. Mm-hmm. Well, Duh. <laughs> uh, I know who you really are. <laughs> That's gorgeous. I know who you really are. Thank you so These much. These are your real wings. Mm -hmm. Wow, not your real wings, your artistic ones. The, yeah. Your painted wings. <laughs> so cool. Yes. Do you feel any echoes from the original painting you did, or the drawing you did, the energy drawing? Mmm, I do remember it. Let's see. Yep, like in here. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can bring it for the show. Oh, definitely. I'm going to find it. <laughs> definitely going to find it. I'm going to touch these up a little bit more. But for wearing them, this is good for right now. You want another red one over there, apparently. In here, there's, there's some some um, some of your in, your drawing is in there. It's so cool. Thank but you. I can't wait to see the rest of it. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you. No, thank you. <laughs> it was lovely, a pleasure, an honor, and I'm just grateful to be able to create for you and to 
collaborate in a creative way uh, with your performance on 11.11, it's going to be amazing. Yeah. Can't wait. Perfect grand finale. <laughs> perfect, perfect grand finale. Thank you. This is the depiction of two souls colliding, myself and Eugenia Ortiz. And it is a journey through the chakras. It is the representation of a mantra that is protection, grace, ease, and harmony. Each of these things that I'm hoping to, to step into as a blessing and as a, as a guiding wind in my life. And um, I feel very blessed to, uh, to be able to, um, to have this and to have this experience. Um, I feel like we are, as a species, encountering a great shift on our planet in so many ways and we have been for a long time now and um, it's so important to focus on ways that we can give back to one another and ways that we can connect on a human level and so on November 11th we will be gathering in this room to connect with one another to be able to celebrate the mantras that keep us moving forward be able to celebrate human connection and what it looks like for human souls to collide and what beauty can come about from that and um, how when we follow intention beautiful intentions and our um, and abandon maybe some of our of our um, apprehension or our obsession with intellect that we can find each other and find what is beautiful with each other um, so please do come and, um, and yeah, thank you so much. <laughs>